The problem with today's real estate market is affordability. Are we going to be able to afford homes after we have seen such a massive increase uh, in pricing and now the interest rates are you know going up pricing's kind of stabling off are we going to be able to afford homes as we move forward in this real estate market in denver stay tuned i'll let you know What's up guys, Jeremy Kane, EXP Realty. Super excited to dive into this and I've been really keeping an eye on the market. So let's dive straight into it. As we've kind of seen over the last two years, obviously in the Denver market, the pricing has kind of gone crazy and not just the Denver market, kind of across the country. And as we kind of got a reprieve from the pricing going nuts after this spring, now we see interest rates spike up. And so that's really um, been tough. And I have a client that recently uh, looked at getting a down payment assistance, you know, loan, needed a chaff, he's a single income, and he was looking at, you know, $500,000 mortgage, which he absolutely qualified for, but he was looking at $4,000 a month for that $500,000 mortgage, which is absolutely insane considering, you know, on the west side, southwest side of Denver, you know, that that's an entry level home at 500000 and so that really got me thinking like, what are we gonna do with this affordability? Is it a crisis? You know, and this is down payment assistance. So you pay a little bit elevated mortgage rate, you know, and whatever, but that's, that's what entry level buyers usually have to do. Um, because you can get into a home with little cash down, but you're gonna pay for it in the monthly payment because the interest rates higher. So the investors kind of get paid back for, for giving you the money up front, less skin in the game. And so I kind of got to thinking, and you know, the biggest thing is that we have to get creative and we'll talk about the lending options shortly, but we have to get creative. Is there some way to get rental income and utilize the house as your primary residence? You know, the house hacking thing is super big and the house hacking thing would look something like buying a house and this is you know not for this client that I'm speaking of um, because he's got some kids and and that kind of stuff and so there's not enough space to to rent out a room or rent out you know a level of your house or whatever but you know if that's an option it's something to think about if you are living in a home with you know you're renting a house with a couple buddies and you know, you're qualified because you have good credit and you have a good job. You could probably get a home with, you know, maybe down payment assistance. Well, do that. If you're the first to do that and your other buddies are living with you and renting it out, they're actually paying your mortgage. They have a place to live. You know, it can still be kosher and everything cool, but you're building your wealth instead of building your landlord's wealth. So that's something that's really cool. Um, and as, as you know, you know, these apartment complexes and these places that are renting and landlords are up in, you know, the big corporate ones are up in their rent $500 every time the, the lease comes up. And so regardless, we're just going to have to get used to paying more in mortgage payment. And that's something that's a little scary. So we're going to have to get creative, you know, multi-generational living, right? Maybe a couple lives with, with their parents or their aunt and uncle move in or, you know, maybe brother and sister and brother and they have, you know, significant others and they come together as couples or whatever. And that's, that's something that we're looking at. And you always can, you know, be on a mortgage together with family, that kind of stuff. Be careful with that. But the bottom line is we're going to have to qualify and we're going to, if we're looking at $4,000 first time home buyer payments, we're going to have to see some rental income usually come in there because first time home buyers can't probably afford that. Um, but as the rents continue to increase and that kind of stuff keeps going and inflation and whatever, hopefully that's kind of under control and we can kind of see a leveling off of rents like we've seen in pricing. Um, that's just what it's going to have to be is get ultra creative, super cool tools. Obviously, you know, you have the Airbnbs, the v Verbos of the world. You know, those things are super awesome. Airbnbs, more the room rent. Those are all things you can do. And if you have, you know, a secondary entrance or whatever, and maybe you could fix up a really nice Airbnb room or whatever that looks like and utilize that and get just some income or, you know, Denver has a huge ADU, you know, influx and there's a lot of zoning and stuff that's being changed. So you can have those ADUs, especially in those older neighborhoods with the detached garage, you can, you know, maybe 
probably knock down the old structure because I wouldn't build an ADU on top of some of those 1930s garages. But these are all options that we have to consider to make um, the living affordable. And people are like, well, that kind of sucks. It is what it is, right? But if you can get that mortgage payment manageable and you're having people help you or cover it all, then obviously you're building wealth and you can really get a kickstart because then you have that equity working for you. Um, you can utilize that equity, you know, for whatever you need to. And that's a huge up. Um, so those are kind of the creative living options. Obviously, uh, not everyone wants a roommate, but um, I'd probably probably as rent increases, you're gonna have to have a roommate anyways. So you might as well buy a place and have the roommate pay your mortgage instead of you both pay someone else's in my opinion. But uh, so we could get creative all day with that. If you're in a situation where you're living with a friend or whatever, like let's talk, let's see if there's something we can do. And that kind of brings me to the loan options. And obviously you have the down payment assistance and that stuff, it's gonna come with that higher mortgage. But if you can get in with no money down and you're starting to work, you know, get that equity working, you're in the principal buy down, but we'll see equity gain as we move forward. Not quite what it used to be, hopefully, because that put us where we're at. But those are things we can talk about. In lending, there's a lot of buy down talk and that's just buying down the interest rate. There's a three, two, one buy down where year one, you have 3% off of the par rate. Uh, year two, you have 2% off the par rate. Year three, you have 1% off the par rate. And then four through 30, you're gonna have the par rate, whatever it is today, whatever it's going at. And how that works is, you know, the seller would have to give you a concession. And obviously if it's three, two, one, it's dollar for dollar. Basically that concession is gonna go straight towards paying down the interest. And you have to have all of the interest. So 3% for 12 months, 2% for 12 months, 1% for 12 months, all of that money and all of that interest that would be paid goes into an escrow account. And actually it's being paid dripping out of that escrow account to balance out your payment as you go. But the cash out of your pocket is, you know, lower because that that 3% interest is getting paid. 3% of the interest payment is getting paid uh, each month for 12 months and then 2% less of the interest is coming straight from that escrow and whatever. So, and then you'll have that payment and it'll be what it is at the end of the, the day. So that's something to consider. Um, the two one buy down is a little more common. It's not quite as lump sum up front. That's 2% less for a year, 1% less for another year. And then year three through 30, you're paying the, the par rate and what it is. You do have the option to refinance if the par rate dips, but I'm also here to tell you that we are seeing a little bit of pullback in pricing here. It's not crash or anything, but it's just not from the peak. So if you buy on the way down, you're gonna lose a little value. And if you're in that, you know, that low down payment range, it might be very difficult for you to refinance because we've gotten so used to refinancing over the years with the equity in our homes, we might not have that equity right away. So if the interest rate goes, you know, a point and a half lower in six months, you probably won't have the, in the equity to kind of offset that. So you might have to bring a little extra cash to closing and that kind of stuff, which probably is going to be difficult coming off a purchase like that. So that's just something to consider. I always tell people don't rely on, you know, if you're not going to do the buy downs, you're not going to do the permanent buy down or the temporary buy down. Don't rely on the interest rates coming down in three months and being able to refinance because the value is going to be affected just a little bit. Nothing crazy, but if you're at a 96.5% loan to value and you lose a little bit of equity, you're kind of, you're technically underwater. Now, with that said, just be able to make sure you're making that monthly payment every single month and you'll be good to go. And and so the three, two, one, the two, one buy down, people are talking about the permanent buy downs again, because now it's making a little more sense than when rates were skyrocketing. Um, and, and you need a really good lender on your side to compare and show you the numbers, right? Maybe the two, one buy down versus the permanent buy down. Maybe you're not going all the way 2% below that par, but maybe you can buy it down a point and a half or something, depending on the cost of the loan. And so if you can do that and it's permanent for 30 years, you'll probably be pretty safe, especially since rates have come down a little bit recently. You know, if you're buying it down a point or a point and a half, you're probably going to be pretty close to a really good interest rate that we'll probably see for the foreseeable future. 
Um, so that's something that, to really look at and make sure you have those options and someone that can explain what they really mean and what the long-term effects will be and the cost out of pocket and all of that, your break even points and all of that stuff, have a lender that's on your side. That's part of the problem is people are going to a lot of these internet lenders because they're promising all these rates and they're doing all this stuff, but they're really just buying it down for you without doing anything and you don't know what's going on. And then you get to the table, they're like, oh, we need an extra $10,000 so you can get that rate. Oh, you don't want that rate? You know, and then you're, you're kind of screwed. So make sure you have your reputable lenders um, that know your local market, that your real estate agents like me would have worked with in the past and trust. Uh, it's a huge deal. So a lot of lending options, a lot of just living options to make homes affordable. I think this, you know, leveling out and hopefully we see a level market. I'm, I'm a little nervous about the people on the sidelines. If you watch my market report, which I can post right here, um, that's kind of a concern for me come spring when the rates do dip a little bit, because every time we see anything happen in the, in the world right now, rates dip, we see, you know, little flood of buyers, little flood. But if they really come down and stabilize, we're going to see the floodgates open and prices are going to go up and all that money you save for waiting for the interest rates to go down is going to go away in a second because then we're going to get back into the, the bidding and hopefully we don't go six figures over like we were seeing in lower price points. But uh, that's that's kind of what I got. And if you ever have any questions or you would like to talk to me, uh, private buyer consultation, DM me, text me, email me, whatever you need to do. Would love to chat with you. There's also a link below. You can book straight into my calendar and we can have a conversation about what all this means for you, making a plan for affordability. Maybe you know someone who's renting or you're renting yourself and you want to change it. I might not be able to change it overnight, but we can change it, you know, over time with the lending partners and things that I have. So super grateful for you all. I hope Hope you have a good day. Jeremy Kane, EXP Realty. And uh, let me know if I can do anything for you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.